Here's a photo of the tool storage system that I developed to go on the doors to the engine room in my Out Islander 41. I posted this to the owners group on Facebook and had a lot of good comments and multiple people asking me to uh, make them and sell them to members in the group. A little shocked because I didn't think they were that good, but being a uh, homeowner, a full-time job, a boat and whatnot, and a YouTube channel, there's only so many hours in the day. So what I thought I would do is show how I made these and um, let you see that it's not as hard as it looks and like the title says you can do this too so let's get started first thing you want to do is measure the leaf of the doors to your engine room keeping a couple things in mind good to give yourself some space around the edge and you want to make sure that you attach these to the thick part of the door frame so I'd recommend giving yourself at least a half inch space around the dimension of your door frame from where you're going to start your tool storage system. So I always get a question, why did you choose that particular fabric and what is it? Well the fabric that I chose is the Sailrite's Custom Underlinement Beige. I chose it for two reasons. Mainly, number one, I had a lot of extra of it. I would say you could probably use just about any fabric you want. A sombrella, a heavy canvas, any of those would just work fine. This one I had a whole lot of. And the other reason is, if you look at it, it's kind of porous. It has sort of a plasticky um, uh, feel to it. And my thought was that it would also aid in dampening the sound. Uh, so you can get that at Sailrite or use whatever you want. Um, not sponsored by Sailrite, but hey, Sailrite, if you're out there and you want to send me a new machine, appreciate it. Positioning and laying out of your tools. This is the big step. This is where you're going to make all of your design choices. So take your time, try different layouts, maybe even sleep on it overnight. That's what I did, and even while I was finalizing my design and putting it together, I was still making some tweaks. So take your time here. Once you've decided on a layout, now the next step, you need to cut your pockets to hold your tools. I generally took my pockets edge to edge, and I ended up making them a little bit taller than they should have been for the simple fact that you weren't able to read the sizes on the wrench. So give that a good bit of thought. And remember also, as you lay this out, you're going to need a little extra material because the wrenches are going to expand a little bit. So don't be afraid to make them a little bit over the edges. And we'll talk about that later. Now with your layout decided and you've cut your pockets, it's time to start assembly. I highly recommend using basting tape. Here I use 3 8 inch basting tape on the back side of the pockets. This allows you to position them and then sew them quite easily, just like you see here. Here you can see where I sew in the process of sewing on a pocket on top of a pocket. Don't be afraid to give this option a try. You can do it. Here I'm getting ready to sew the individual tool pockets. One of the things I did as part of my layout was I drew nice straight lines in between the tools just to make the sewing a little bit neater for the end product. You don't have to do this, but I found it easier for me to do. After you're done sewing all those pockets, don't forget to cut off your tails both front and back to give it that good finish look. Now let's go ahead and do a test fit and see how those tools fit into the individual pockets. Here you see two examples of the test fit that I did. Pro tip here, one thing I found out that the larger wrenches require just a little bit wider pocket to keep the puckering out. So I would say when you're laying yours out, give that one or two larger wrenches just a little bit more space and you should be all right. On my layout here, there are some items that I chose not to use pockets to hold them in here. 
most notably the screwdrivers, the uh, electrical items there, and the tape measure and whatnot. I just thought it'd be easier to use elastic on that. So let's go ahead and talk about how we get that done. As an example, here you see a piece of uh, elastic that I've cut and positioned to hold the top part of the forceps in. Next, you see that after it's been sewn in place. Also, here's a shot of two larger pieces of elastic that I've used to uh, mount the large handle ends on a screwdriver. You can use smaller ones down on the actual tool end to keep them in place. And here, you see elastic that I'm using to keep in place a uh, voltmeter. This was a lot easier than trying to make square pockets uh, and hold them in place. Here we see the tools all finely mounted in there. We could move right on to putting the mounting grommets on at this point, but I decided to take it to another level and put some edge binding on. Let's get started. For the edge binding, I decided to use one and a quarter inch binding that I got from Sailrite. You can make this yourself or just buy it from any uh, fabric shop. On my prototype, I used half inch binding and it just wasn't thick enough by the time you laid it over the edge and uh, had the pockets and everything on there. So I think the one and a quarter inch binding works the best. First step in applying the binding for me is to radius the corners. It's not required, but it'll definitely make the sewing a lot easier. I used a quarter to give me a nice smooth edge. You can use whatever you want or do it by hand. So here you see the line, and then last of all you see the finished radius corner. The first thing I did was I used the iron to decrease the binding over it, make it easier to hold it onto the item. Here we see it started loading onto the uh, storage system. I used basting tape on the back side just to help hold everything in place. Here you see going around the corner, and finally the binding loaded on the whole piece ready for sewing. Take the sewing slow and easy and remember when you're going around the corners cut some relief cuts into that binding to help it lay flat. Here finally you see the finished product all done sewing. In order for mounting I used uh, six grommets on each one of my tool holders. This would allow me to put a short screw through them into the back side of the uh, cabinet. You can get the grommet kits at um, Walmart, Amazon, um, Sailrite, any of those places. They come with the front and the back side and the setting dies. I also used a rotary tool hole cutter here just to make things a little bit easier. You could probably cut it out with an exacto knife if you were really careful, but the rotary tool cutter makes it really slick and easy to do. Go ahead and mark your positions there so you know where to use the rotary tool, tool cutter. Go ahead and cut that hole in there. Now you're ready to set the dies. Here we see the grommets loaded on the dies ready to be installed. Go ahead and uh, put that bottom die through the hole in your item. Load the top die on the top and whack it with a good, good heavy hammer two or three times. Don't be don't be shy here. Get it good and tight. Here you see the grommet all finished, ready to move on to the next one. As I said, I... Here's a quick look at the finished product that we did together. And along with that is the prototype that I did earlier. So this represents the tool storage system for both leaves of the engine room. Thanks a lot. Okay. That's a quick vlog there on how uh, I put together those tool storage uh, ideas for the engine room. Uh, thanks to you out there who asked how to do it. I hope this video was inspirational. Uh, not that I'm a great seamstress or anything like that, but I wanted to pass that knowledge on to you. And uh, as always, thank you for tuning in. If you haven't, remember to hit that subscription button. We really, really appreciate it. And remember to uh, hit the like us on Facebook and click those update buttons, okay? So, peace and fair winds to you all.